You better believe there are things that go bump in the night. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 movies that make you afraid of the dark. You're not afraid of the dark, are you? For this list, we're looking at films that best use the element of darkness to deliver their scares, whether by hiding monsters in the shadows or by creating tension through our inability to clearly see what's around the corner. But now, she's going to stay, okay? As long as I keep my head clear and you keep the lights out. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. Number 20, Poltergeist. They're here. We kick off our list with one of the finest entry-level horror films ever made. And by that we mean Poltergeist is a perfect film to serve as an introduction for younger people into the world of horror cinema. This 1982 film does an excellent job of tapping into childhood fears of death, the dark, the unknown, and the supernatural. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one... More specifically, the scene early on when an otherwise innocuous backyard tree and toy clown suddenly turn very, very scary ties into those innocent feelings of fear that haunted us when we were sleeping alone as kids. After all, everything looks scarier in the dark, and Poltergeist knows this all too well. Number 19, Pitch Black. What is it, Renick? What is it now? Like I said, it ain't me you gotta worry about. Bright Light was a real lifesaver to the characters in this fan-favorite sci-fi horror flick, offering them safety from some very nasty creatures lurking out there in the dark. Jack! Despite dividing critics, Pitch Black undeniably succeeded in giving a palpable sense of menace to the hideous creatures inhabiting a remote desert planet all of which have murderous intent, but remain intensely susceptible to light. The CGI was effective for the time, but it's the noise the creatures make when just out of view that makes them so enduringly terrifying. Movie monsters come and go, but a sound like this will haunt you for years. Do I even want to know? Number 18, The Woman in Black. England's Hammer films raised eyebrows in the 60s and 70s with their boundary-pushing content. Blood and Boobs was the name of the Hammer game for a long time before market saturation killed the brand. The Woman in Black was a comeback of sorts for Hammer Films, in that it was their first major box office success post-revival. A creepy as hell nod to the studio's gothic horror past, the film also possessed just enough modern sensibilities to stand on its own two feet. Specifically, this macabre cinematic ghost story makes great use of atmospheric nighttime sequences and shadows cast along the walls of an abandoned rural estate. With this release, Hammer Films seemingly remembered that sometimes it's what we don't see that scares us most. Number 17, Darkness Falls. We stay in the light, we stay alive. We stay in the light, we stay alive. This is a phrase uttered by one of the characters in Darkness Falls, a 2003 horror film that honestly isn't very good, but which does possess an interesting premise. Oh my God! The idea of a vengeful ghost nicknamed the Tooth Fairy is a cool spin on our shared childhoods. Add in the fact that the ghost was photophobic during her life, and you have the makings of a movie that revels in shadows. The sensitivity to light gimmick ensures that our characters spend plenty of time jumping at things emerging from the dark, while simultaneously hiding the technical flaws of the film's visual effects. One, two, three! <laughs> Number 16, The Strangers. <laughs> One night. Sometimes, that's all it takes. The Strangers is a film that received mixed reviews from critics, but quickly earned a rabid cult following of horror enthusiasts who were transfixed by this tale of home invasion. Writer and director Brian Bertino crafted a quiet, disturbing, and suspenseful film, one that reveled in isolation and darkness. The twisted family that terrorizes leads Scott Speedman and Liv Tyler can be seen lurking in the shadowed background of some shots, elevating the creep factor to cardiac-inducing levels of tension. 
The one night setting also means that we don't see the light of day until the movie's conclusion, placing us right along for the ride with the troubled couple as they fight for their lives. Number 15, The Others. Nicole Kidman and her family possess the same sensitivity to light mentioned in our earlier entry about Darkness Falls, a plot device that means we spend a lot of our time here in a single dark house with the blinds shut tight. Stop it. Get off my bed, both of you. This is our bed. No, it's mine. Um, please stop putting on that voice. Of course, it helps that The Others is a better film than Darkness Falls, using old-school gothic atmosphere much in the same way Hammer Studios did in their pre-gratuitous glory day. The dark shadows and restrained visuals are subtle but intensely effective, managing to scare us without becoming overly reliant on cheap jumps. What's the matter? As a result, The Others has aged like a fine wine. A creepy, totally frightening wine. What do you want? Number 14, The Witch. Speakers have to speak to join us in mercy. A dense horror film that refuses to play to audience expectations, The Witch was a revelation when it was released. Director Robert Eggers crafted a slow-moving and murky story with thick colonial accents, disturbing imagery, and an ending that either had you standing in your seat or scratching your head in confusion. <laughs> The film's desolate woods are used as characters unto themselves, while Black Philip the Goat simply has to be the most evil goat in the history of cinema. Meanwhile, the scenes of witchcraft, sacrifice, and blasphemy are all ramped up to 11, giving us nightmares of living deliciously alongside a coven of our own. What's that like to live deliciously? Number 13, Cloverfield. Man, what is going on? Maybe you should have left town a little bit earlier, right? Shut up. The trio of producers J.J. Abrams, writer Drew Goddard, and director Matt Reeves struck gold in 2008 with Cloverfield, a found footage film, giant monster flick, and launchpad for a cinematic universe all rolled into one. The key to the film's success is how well the plot moves along, despite the monster being generally camera shy. <laughs> Normally, this might be frustrating for those who grew up on classic Godzilla flicks, but Cloverfield retains our attention via likable characters, strong visual effects, and the natural production value of New York City at night. The darkness of the street and subway sequences is enhanced by the chaotic blackout conditions, while the film's near-endless Easter eggs ensure that Cloverfield retains plenty of replay value. Are you guys seeing this shit right now? Oh my god! Oh god! Oh god! Number 12. The Descent. When you think it's dark when you turn out the lights, well, down there, it's pitch black. Here's a movie about some spelunkers who thought it would be a great idea to traverse an unmapped cavern. Upon their journey into the abyss, things go horribly wrong. Listen, the worst thing that could have happened to you has already happened, okay? And you're still here. It quickly becomes a struggle to survive against the abominations that are stalking them. The Descent as a title can be interpreted both literally and as Descent into Madness, with plenty of gore, a claustrophobic setting, and more creepy crawlies than one's sanity can handle. The fear of what lies beneath is very real here. So real, you may be too scared to go into your own basement after seeing this film. Number 11, Hereditary. Louis, if you're here... <gasps> Ari Aster knocked it out of the park with his feature film debut in 2018, this absolutely horrifying occult masterpiece. The film uses themes of grief, guilt, and illness to shroud the narrative with an overarching feeling of unbalance, as if something or everything is about to go terribly wrong. Slow and measured at first, Hereditary nevertheless kicks things into high gear during its climax and pulls no punches with how visceral and violent it can get. There isn't much room for daytime activity in Hereditary, and it seems as if nighttime brings out a near-endless stream of tragedies for the Graham family, from loss and possession to suicide and self-harm. Don't watch this one with the lights off. Number 10, Sinister. Family hanging out 11?
Writer Ellison Oswalt needs inspiration, and soon finds it in the form of a bunch of snuff films in his attic. The films in question unleash a spirit known as Bagul, who proceeds to terrorize Oswalt in the most disturbing ways possible. The way in which the creature blends into the scenery, setting itself up for killer jump scares that are a heart attack waiting to happen, can only be described as, well, sinister. To think Ellison found something that horrifying in his own house makes us wonder what could be lurking in the walls of our own homes. And it gives us the creeps. Number 9. The Orphanage, also known as El Orfanato. An orphanage, a place to provide a home for children, and absolute terror? Many critics have praised this film for its lack of cheap scares, meaning there are no fake-outs or crazy people hiding around a corner. The film instead instills an intensely uncomfortable atmosphere to mess with your head, as you're always waiting for something spooky to happen, yet it always manages to catch you off guard. <gasps> for all intents and purposes, the film manages to mess with your head more than a few times during its runtime, so don't be surprised if you find yourself looking over your shoulder regularly once it's done. No! Number 8. Alien What's worse than being stuck on a deep, dank ship in the middle of space? Being stuck there with a freaky, killer alien that's just as elusive as it is lethal. Of course, the alien has to be completely black, with limbs that look exactly like the many pipes and components found within the ship, allowing it to cleverly camouflage itself, awaiting the perfect time to strike. <laughs> It's quite likely that Alien has planted seeds of anxiety for anyone offered the option to travel into space in the future. Endless black nothingness with a chance of killer aliens? No thanks. <laughs> Number 7. Wreck. When a film crew is trapped in an apartment building, with the electricity out and only their equipment as sources of visibility, every second of the movie becomes a breakneck roller coaster ride of pure dread and unbelievable terror. There isn't a moment for the characters to catch their breath, or for you to catch yours for that matter, as rabid, violent zombies are littered everywhere. In most zombie movies, the undead can be clearly seen, making them easier to escape from or fend off. This time, no such luck. <laughs> Number 6. The Babadook. Ba -ba -ba -dook, dook, dook. That's when you'll know that he's around. You'll see him if you look. This psychological horror does not mess around. Nearly dimly lit throughout, with shadows always creeping in the background, the visual style is made all the more frightening in how it makes nearly every frame a perfect hiding spot for the film's titular antagonist. The few times that we do see the Babadook creature, it only lasts for a brief moment, but we learn to associate the dark environment with its grisly, haunting face. For that reason, you will be sitting at the edge of your seat, fearing the notion that the scare of your life is waiting to jump out. It isn't real. It isn't real. It isn't real. <sighs> Number 5. Lights Out You have to turn the light switch off. As you'd expect with a title like that, the movie plays with the concepts of light and dark to great effect here. The ghastly silhouette monster within the film is only able to operate within the darkness. Therefore, keeping the lights on is pivotal to survival. With this film rule clearly established, the idea of the movie switching off the lights becomes just as terrifying a possibility for us as it does for the characters within the story, as we really don't want the dark to come back. Most horror movies use the darkness to heighten the scares. This one centers all of them around it. Number 4. Halloween <laughs> What could be scarier than the night he came home? There's really nothing more that needs to be said about John Carpenter's seminal 1978 shocker Halloween. Michael Myers is the boogeyman, terrorizing Laurie Strode, Sheriff Brackett, and all the townspeople of Haddonfield, Illinois with stoic, unrelenting resolve. 
Dean Cundy's camera prowls and creeps from its first-person gaze through the streets, across backyards, and behind bushes, capturing the perfect essence of Halloween night. <laughs> Meanwhile, Meyer's iconic mask and Carpenter's genre-defining theme song make Halloween the perfect movie to watch in the dark, whether you're afraid or not. Number three, The Conjuring. Who's ever down there to lock you in now? <laughs> Rickety old house? Check. Vengeful ghost? Check. The film story is inspired by true events? Extra disturbing check. As two paranormal investigators get to the bottom of a series of eerie events happening at an isolated farmhouse, they quickly begin to realize just how screwy things have gotten. <laughs> Naturally, in true horror movie fashion, they feel compelled to do all of their research and ghost busting in the, you guessed it, pitch black. This is, however, done very well in terms of making the film scary, as the dark ambiance only adds to the uneasy, isolated feeling that the house already provides. <laughs> Number two, The Blair Witch Project. We light fires, they know. They, I haven't heard anything follow us. We should even turn that light off, too. You will never feel comfortable in a forest again. When three young filmmakers venture out into a dense wooded area in search of an urban legend known as the Blair Witch, they begin to experience many unexplainable, uncanny events. Turn that light off. Turn that light off. As if the many mind games weren't enough, this witch seems to enjoy stalking its victims in the pitch black, with several of the most terrifying sequences in the movie occurring at night, with relentless tension and blood-curdling screams from the actors. It's enough to make you rethink ever camping again. I'm scared to close my eyes. I'm scared to open them. Well, I'm sufficiently scared and will be sleeping with a nightlight for the foreseeable future, and also not going camping, or doing pretty much anything, come to think of it. I am paralyzed by fear. But seriously, there's one movie that's made us more afraid of the dark than any other. Any clue what it could be? Let's check out these terrifying honorable mentions, and then we will scare our way to number one. <laughs> I bet if I hit the right spot, I can make you scream. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, paranormal activity. Due to its low budget of a mere $15,000, Paranormal Activity was limited to fairly basic film equipment and production values. But this ironically worked in its favor. The grungy look of the cinematography helped elevate the realism the movie strove to capture, as it really felt like the events actually happened and were caught on home video. Furthermore, the lack of any true special effects left quite a bit to the imagination. And as any true horror buff can tell you, it's what you don't see that scares you the most. Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here.